Welcome to Home Remodeler Toolbox, the podcast dedicated to empowering remodelers and builders to build and grow successful businesses. Join your host, Bob Vance, founder of Home Remodeler SEO, as he brings you industry insights and strategies that will help you build a thriving business, no matter what level you're at in your business. Whether you're a thriving multi-million dollar business or you're working on building your business from the foundation up, this podcast is your go-to source for industry secrets and actionable strategies that you can implement in your business to get to that next level. So, turn on, tune in, and let's help you build your business foundation one building block at a time. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Home Remodeler Toolbox podcast today. Uh, today we have Gigi Kinsey on our show. Uh, Gigi is a talented designer, an accomplished remodeler, a business entrepreneur, and a real estate investor. Uh, Gigi is, is not only built a successful career in transforming kitchens and bathrooms with her company, Kinsey Interiors and Remodel, but she's also on a, on a mission to empower women uh, to take control of their lives financially, spiritually, and physically with her newest venture, the Renovate Her Network. Uh, Gigi is on a mission to, to guide women into the world of remodeling uh, by helping teach them to combine both design and construction, thereby allowing them to build valuable, profitable businesses. Uh, Gigi's personal journey is as inspiring as her professional accomplishments. Uh, so today we're going to dive into Gigi's experiences, uh, her approach to design, and really how she's transforming not just homes, but transforming the lives of many women in industry today. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome Gigi Kinsey uh, today on our show. Gigi, thank you for being here. I'm so excited to be here with you, Bob. I've known you for a little while, about a year now since I've been with SEO uh, your SEO program. And, um, I love what you're doing here with the podcast. Awesome. Great. Thank you so much. Yeah. I think, uh, I think I, I, I was looking at your, um, some of your bio and your websites today and I'm thinking, you know what, I, I a podcast might be next in your future. You always seem to be pushing the envelope on everything you're doing. <laughs> well, yeah, we'll see about that. That's all. That's another whole thing, right? <laughs> right. Exactly. Just another iron in the fire, more work for you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess, Gigi, tell it just to start out, um, tell folks where you're uh, where you're at, your company name, where you guys are located and kind of what you guys mostly specialize in. Sure. So um, I own Kinsey Interiors and Remodel and we're in Central Texas. So we're going to get in Georgetown, Texas, about 30 minutes out of Austin. So really central Texas. Um, we specialize in interior remodeling with a real focus on bathrooms and kitchens. But if you know anything about bathrooms and kitchens, once you start at one of those, anything and everything inside the house is up, you know, for grabs. And so really everything inside the house. But what we don't do, we don't do additions. We don't pop the top. Those are not things we're doing at this time. So that's what Kinsey Interiors and Remodel does about 25 years into this particular business. Okay. How did you get your start in the remodeling business? I, I, I noticed uh, that, that you kind of grew up with it. It was in your bloodstream. And so it seems like it goes really far back. So, you know, I um, loved, I have loved interior design. I've loved home building, architecture, remodeling since I was very, very young, like 10 years old. I just loved it. The uh, idea of becoming an architect was what I kind of wanted when I grew up and things just didn't work out that way. And so when I was in my mid-30s, I had an opportunity to start my own business. So I decided to head in the direction of interior design, interior design consulting, took classes, got some education, and then just went for it. Um, I did that for a few years. I really worked more as a design consultant and worked with builders and with uh, general contractors, along with, you know, the general public. And um, after so much time in that, I realized that I really was more drawn to the construction end of things. And I realized that I had fallen into sort of that traditional women want to be in that renovation area. They become design consultants. 
And the money really was in being the general contractor of these projects. And so I decided in the year 2008, nine to become a general contractor that I was kind of tired of leaving that money on the table. And we were in the midst of a huge recession at that time. So I wasn't, my phone wasn't blowing up asking for $10,000 worth of new draperies at that time. <laughs> but I knew, this is what I knew, Bob. This is how I survived. Um, there are people with money, even when we are in a deep recession. People are losing jobs and businesses everywhere. There are still people with money in their pockets, but we have to find their pain point in order to, for them to release some of that cash to us. And the pain point at that time was, People could not sell their homes. They were stuck and they didn't know how long they were going to be stuck. So remodeling their bathrooms, remodeling their kitchens to where they could enjoy the home for now until that time came when they could do the move up um, became something that people were doing during that time. So I said, I own a plumbing company. I also owned a plumbing company along with my husband. I think I'm going to become a specialist in bathroom remodels. Started advertising and started knocking those bathroom remodels out, learning on every single job. You wouldn't believe. I just had a, I just told myself I will never leave a client unhappy. So whether it costs me money or not, everything was going to be perfect on that job. And that's how I learned at the feet of my specialty contractors who were so good to me. Once I became known as, Special, specialist in bathroom reno, I decided to tackle kitchens and found out kitchens are way easier than bathrooms. I should have started there, but that's what I added. And then it went into everything interior and my business just started growing from there. It's, it, it, it sounds like, I mean, it almost feels like this was all mapped out for you, but yet it just, you, you took it one step at a time and it just kept expanding. Is that, I mean, is that kind of your approach to life where you just, you just tackle it and, and just figure it out along the way. Uh, it, it seems like you have a knack for it. I mean, you own multiple successful businesses. I, um, whether it's a good thing or not, I am pretty much one of those people that says, I'm going to do this and I will figure <laughs> it out as I go. But one of the good things um, that I have learned since early on in my business is not to be chasing shiny objects. So I did do that at one point and made a big mistake and I learned from it. And so I learned to build upon what I already had. And so not to completely go out after something totally different, but to build upon what I'm already offering and have a menu of services and say, now I'm going to add this and I'm going to get really good at this. I'm going to be known as an expert at this. And then when I'm an expert at this, I'm going to add this next thing and become an expert at that. And so that's really how my business grew as um as for as my menu grew and then i was able to say i'm making too dang much money doing this so i'm gonna go back to that menu of services and delete some of these less profitable time consuming services and just really and so that's how really i mostly only do remodel now i'm we don't really go in and do any type of design consulting uh, on a very very often i should say um, and we only really do uh, real like coming in and doing draperies and furnishings and things like that for design, uh, for remodel clients at the end of the job if that's what they want. But that's not our service we're, we're sending out to the public. Okay. So it kind of leads me to a, a next question I had um, that I've really been curious about is, is what really sets you apart uh, what's that like one success secret? And, 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 and I'm getting a feeling that it's, you know, don't just focus on design, be able to do the whole project and be good at, you know, as perfect as you can at, at doing that whole project. So I don't want to put words in your mouth, but, you know, what would you say is is one of your really big success secrets to to the thing that's brought you to where you're at today? Yeah. So the, the term we use when we explain who we are to people is term key. So most people, a homeowner will say, I guess I need to hire a designer to design my new kitchen. Or they say, I need to go find a general contractor to remodel my kitchen. And the, G the general contractor says, great, where's the design? I don't know what I'm bidding unless you tell me what the design is. And the, the, the designer can only design it. And then they have to go out and get bids on it and then find out maybe the design is, you know, $25,000 more than what they can spend. We do it all. 
So we start with our clients' priority list, their wish list, and their budget. And then we try to be good stewards of their money and give them the biggest bang for their buck that they can get. It may be everything and more. Or we may have to go to that wish list and say, let's take a few things off the wish list that aren't vital to you because we want to get you to the number you want to get to. So we start with uh, what I like to say is where designers might spend three, four, five, six months designing a kitchen, then it goes to bed. We actually try to sell the remodel first and then get the nitty gritty design details done after we have a down payment in our hand. So we get to the money quicker and then we get the details of the design down pat. We have a system for this. It works beautifully. It's not willy nilly people all over the place. It's very close. We can get them in and out of that uh, remodel much quicker this way. And they have one company to deal with. They don't have to coordinate between a designer and a general contractor or an architect you know, and a general contractor, and we're not architects. We're not, uh, you know, we we will do plans. We will actually have architects do plans if it's something that, that big, but we keep it to where they're communicating with one company and not a bunch of different, not writing checks to a bunch of different people. Yeah, totally makes sense. I like your, your concept on uh, getting to the money quicker because uh, like we say in marketing a lot, I think a lot of companies, a lot of industries say this, but nothing happens without a sale. So all that design stuff, everything, all these intricacies, these details and where this cabinet's going to go and how big the island's going to be and whatever it may be, none of that's going to happen until you actually sign the contract. So I like your approach, get to the contract, build that relationship, and then everything else will kind of fall into place, right? Yeah. And, and it falls into place if you have a good system and process for making that happen, which we do. Um, we're great at, we know how to assign allowances for fixtures and finishes and then, uh, and then work with those allowances once we sign off and, um, and we know how to do that very, very quickly. We can get our clients, uh, to make their selections very quickly and get to the good stuff, which is demolition. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, speaking of, of, of allowances and things like that, um, one of the one of the questions I had for you was how do you how do you really manage uh, design cost and what you're going to put into a project while also trying to make sure that it's profitable for you as well? I know that you also mentioned a, a kind of a cash flow model that might kind of coincide with that, so that might be two questions in one there. But um, can you yeah. can you shine a little more light on that? Well, you know, I started out using what I believe is pretty common in the remodel world. And that is, um, you know, you take a small down payment and then you start having benchmark payments. When we get to this level, we take a payment. We get to this point, we take a payment. And I did that. And that is very hard. That is why you see uh, GCs chasing money all the time. And um, those benchmarks are also different. If you say, well, we need a payment when the uh, the next benchmark is when the vanity custom cabinet comes into the bathroom. Um, and then the cabinet maker calls you and says, oh, sorry, we're about a week behind, so we can't deliver that. Well, then that means you have to go a whole nother week before you can collect that benchmark payment. But you still have people needing to be paid along the way. So we came up with a system of um, being very, very clear in our initial proposal that is signed off on. We take a, a down payment, and then we have what we call work week payments. So we then divide out the entire after the deposit, after the deposit or down payment, excuse me, is made. We divide the balance out by the number of weeks that we tell them that this should take. We say this is an eight week project. They're going to have eight work week payments. We pick that check up or collect that credit card every single Wednesday that we are working. And the beautiful thing about that is there's no benchmark. Work is happening. The only way there would be no payment that week is if we literally did not work in their house that week which I think maybe happened in COVID a couple of times when people said, I have COVID, you can't come in or, you know, something. That does not happen in my company. We're always working, even if we have to ship somebody around. So we get a week, a weekly payment once demolition has started, once demolition has started. And the beautiful thing about that, Bob, is that if we ever had a client that just stopped paying, then work would stop. 
So you would never find us at the end of the job going, but ma'am, you still owe us $25,000. We've been working and getting it done and you just haven't paid us because work would stop. So when we get to the end of the job, we're at other, we have one punch list payment left after we do punching cleaning, we're done. We're never stuck. Um, and so we're never chasing money and we don't have cash flow problems because of the system we put in place. You, you pretty much made the whole draw system archaic. I, I used to do real estate development, always wait on those bank draws and do they come and uh, I love this. I love this model. I'm, I'm hoping that a lot more people will pick up on this because like you said, you never are not getting paid. You you do the work, you get paid. If you don't get paid, the work stops right then and there. And of course, if the homeowner were, were, were general contracting it themselves, then when the sheet rocker finished, they would pay the sheet rocker. When the plumber finished, he would pay the plumber. So you would have a lot of different checks going out to different people when they finished and completed their job. But the difference is when they work for a turnkey company like mine, they have a contract for, it might be a 15 page detail oriented proposal where we sell, we say every detail of what we will be doing, what we will be providing. And so it's not like there is, uh, they're having to pay the different subcontractors, right? They're just paying this company for the continued, you know, the continuing to progress on their project. And so we have in 20 years not had one uh, problem with this type of setup. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. Obviously a, a testament to the system works as well as the relationships that you're building with clients too, of course. And you've got to perform, correct? I mean, you, yeah. you know, show up. If you don't show up for a week or two, you're going to have very unhappy clients and you're certainly not going to be collecting your work week payments. We show up. Right. <laughs> Show up, do the work. <laughs> what um what do you think really separates you, makes you stand out amongst your competitors there in and around the Austin area? Yeah. So again, I think the fact that we're turnkey, um, we're not one of the GCs that says bring us the design so we can bid this, or you know, um, or you explain to us in detail what you want and we'll draw it on a napkin. Uh we're not that. Um, we're also not an interior designer who then says, I'll design it, but then you have to go find someone to do the work. So they love the ease of everything combined. We we had a client a couple of weeks ago, a few weeks ago, who said, we need to think about this. This seems really high to us. My husband's not, you know, sold on it. We're going to go get some more bids, which is perfectly fine. And when they came back two weeks later and said, yes, we're going with you, the reason was every other bid they got left something out like we'll provide everything except you're going to need to bring the tile to the job you're going to need to brought by the plumbing fixtures i need you to go over here to this cabinet shop and you're going to deal with this cabinet builder they don't bring everything to the table where we leave nothing untouched we we don't even allow really our clients to bring things to the table we don't let them bring their eggs to the restaurant we provide everything not meaning if they have a bathtub they've had in the garage for two years that they're lo in love with that we're not going to put it in, but we don't separate that. It is all inclusive. That makes total sense. That whole turnkey uh, solution, which is what everyone likes. I mean, people nowadays are so busy. They're, they're just being pulled in every different direction. They want a company like yours that not only are you really good at what you do and say you're going to do what you do, but it's everything's just done for them. They just write the check and and maybe consult on some design details, but otherwise they know they can count on you for everything. Yeah. And I will say the other thing, Bob, that I think really does set us apart is our communication skills. Nothing is worse for a homeowner that feel like they're not being communicated with. They don't know who's showing up the next day or if someone's showing up the next day. And they if they're coming the next day, what time are they coming? Do I need to be out of bed at 730? Do I need to have the house open and ready by 10 o'clock. They don't like sitting at home all day and nobody shows or having a knock on the door when they had no idea that anyone was coming. We hear that as a complaint about other companies all the time. So we are extremely careful to communicate with our homeowners what to expect for the week and then what to expect tomorrow morning. Um, they absolutely love that because if we were to say no one's showing up till noon, they know they have an entire morning. They can be gone doing whatever they want to do. They're not just waiting 
I have heard horror stories of people being woken up at 7 a.m. You know, yeah. and it's a painting crew knocking on their door, but none of their GC did not let them know that was even happening. So communication for any business is 100% top of the line customer support. Absolutely. Yeah, that's something we practice or try to practice as well as we can in our company that what we call our white glare, uh, white glove concierge service uh, level of customer service that is just kind of over the top, make sure the communication's all there. Um, and we try to we try to train a lot of the, the companies we work with to be as good as you guys are on that um, communication. So important. It's important in personal relationships as well as business relationships. So it sounds like you guys really got that dialed in. Yeah, it's important to us and it's important to our clients. And I will say that coming into this field as a woman who had never worked in this field before, I've never worked for a remodel company, never worked for a builder, n- never worked in construction. Um, I didn't have a lot of, I did not have a lot of preconceived systems and processes or just traditional ways of doing things in my head. So I created them as I went along. And one of the things that I created, uh, helped me create these systems was number one, never leave a client unhappy. Number two, how would I want my parents to be treated? How would I want my daughter to, you know, in her home to be treated? How would I want to be treated? Um, There is stress in renovation. It is not easy to live through having your home torn up. Most people are not moving out of their house during this time. Some do. Um, And so you do have some times where homeowners can get, uh, upset or irritable because they're just done, right? They're living in a, their kitchen's not available. Um, And so I always think, but how would I want to be treated if I was having a little meltdown that day? Or how would I want my older parents to have been treated? So that was sort of how I learned to communicate and deal with those types of personalities along the way. And then those usually became some of our best word of mouth clients when they saw how we reacted to to that and um i just think as a woman we all we often are really good communicators but we're also much more sensitive to Mm -hmm. our clients emotions and can be a little more nurturing to that we call it handhold we're we're hand holders and we (laughs) do the ends of our clients as we get through this process with them and again, I think that's why we've had a huge word of mouth uh, referral business for so long. Uh, we really didn't get into actually spending a lot of money on uh, marketing until about a year ago um, because we're trying to get to new levels of our business. But getting us to being just a multi million dollar remodel business mostly was uh, word of mouth referrals. We can drive through neighborhoods where we, like every other house we've touched because it went down the street uh, of who who to call. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, referral marketing doesn't get any better than that. And there's a closing, you know, at 90, 100% closing rates there. So great to get that referral marketing going. Um, kind of on the opposite side of that equation, have you... Has, have you really come across anything that's been super challenging in your industry or maybe a super challenging project that you worked on? Well... I'm going to just say that this industry is challenging. I think being in construction, being in remodeling and renovation is is and can be challenging. Um, one of the things I'll just say, because I've been in business long enough, is we've just seen so many economic ups and downs over the years. And so the first one that really hit me was 2008 recession. Um, and as, as I sat there thinking my business is going to go under, that's when I learned how to get really tough and get strong and get smart and find a way to pivot and use my skills to do something different, which is when I got into bathroom remodeling. And uh, that's when my business exploded from being a design consultant where I traded my hours for dollars, right? I'll do this for $125 an hour into I will do this project for you for X amount of dollars. That changed everything. Um, The other challenge, and I see this with other uh, self-employed people, they say, I own a business, but they're really just self-employed. They've created a job, and if they don't show up, then no money comes in. And so when I got to a certain point in my business and I realized I cannot handle more than four remodels at a time, I was selling them, designing them, project managing, uh, you know, superintending. So 
and taking care of brand new clients and selling those jobs as I was doing all of that. And I realized I've got to get help. And so I had a bookkeeper in the office and answering phones. I hired a design assistant and one year later had trained her to where she could go out and sell and design projects. The next hire was my general, uh, was my project manager. Then I hired another designer. And over the years, I knew how to plug in the people to take tasks off of my shoulders so I could just run a business. And I very, very rarely take a client anymore. Um, I don't estimate my jobs anymore. I don't project manage anymore. I have a team who is very well oiled and knows what they're doing so that we can continue. I can work on growing the business. Yeah. Sounds like you may have read The E-Myth by Michael Gerber. I have. <laughs> I, everyone needs to read that. And some people might need to read that two or three times because a lot of folks that we talk with in the industry, they're working in their business and not on their business. And, and for, you know, the listeners out there that don't understand what that means, the E-Myth is, is a a book written by Michael Gerber, where, um, the baker, um, the bakery owner, she was doing everything from baking the bread to selling it, serving it, um, uh, you know, running a cash register, doing the books at night, cleaning the place, doing everything in the business. And she finally learned how to work on the business, how to actually be the visionary that would take that business to the next level. And that's, you know, it's, that's where you've gotten, you can, you can go, um, you know, tour through Tuscany or, or, or go spend time with your family, whatever it may be. And your business still keeps running. Whereas you, you know, the example you gave a lot of people, if they're not on the job, they're not making money anymore. And, and thus, you're really just working a job. You may call yourself a business owner. You may have your own business license, your own company, but you're really just working a job. And you're just, like you said, you're just getting from one job to the next to the next. And, and it, you're never going to break that cycle until you adopt the mindset that you adopted and decided that, you know what, I'm going to be the owner of this company and it will run without me. Yes, Yeah. And, you know, if you have an exit strategy, which every business owner needs to have at least one exit strategy, uh, if you think that you're going to sell the business and you're the only person who makes money, you may have assistants, you may have uh, people in the office, but if you are the only rainmaker and revenue doesn't happen, if you don't show up, selling that business is almost impossible unless you sell to someone who says, but you have to stay on and continue doing your thing. So that's not what we want when we sell a company. I sold a plumbing company two years ago and we were out of there in two weeks because we had such a well oiled machine, we could hand it off. And so you need to create a business with an exit strategy in mind and then plan and build the business according to that so you can do whatever it is you wanna do to exit. Everyone doesn't wanna sell the business as an exit strategy. You may wanna hand it down to your children. You may wanna keep a a whole team running it so that as you retire, you just simply get a paycheck every single week out of this company that you own, but you have devoted yourself to training this team. Uh, There's a lot of different things you can do but it's not going to happen if it's all on your shoulders. So that's very important as you grow. We don't restart there, but we don't stay there. Right, right. One thing you mentioned earlier, it kind of reminded me of your your resiliency, your toughness. And um, I, I know you have a quote that, that the best thing that happened to you usually comes after the worst thing that's happened to you. Uh, yeah. Where did you, where'd that quote come from or, or how did that how did that really come into your life? Well, that quote is just straight from me because it's, it's the truth that in my whole life, and, and and this is a beautiful thing, Bob, about getting older. As we get older, we have a history and we can start looking back at our history and then we learn from our own history. And I can look back at my history and say, every time I thought this was the worst thing that could happen in my life, the most wonderful things came after that. So whether it was my my first marriage collapsing, but then ma- the man of my dreams I've been married to for 31 years, you know, that it, those things that we feel at the moment are horrible. So when I was in the recession, say of 2008, and we basically, basically we were going to go bankrupt in that recession without ever declaring bankruptcy, you know what I mean? Um, we, but we were determined to keep plugging along. And yet my business experience loaded because it forced me to find the renovation part of what I was doing, quit supporting the renovation industry and become part of it. And that's where my business exploded. I then, you know, another 
10 years later, uh, actually 11 years later, I was, uh, my husband and I were finally empty nesters. I've shared the story with you, Bob. My daughter graduated college in 2010. We were deep in our businesses, getting them going, running, having a great time. And I found out I was pregnant and I was 49 years old when I had my last son. And that wasn't in the part. We didn't have a plan written down. Oh, and when we're 49, let's have a new baby and plan another college education and push retirement. It just happened. Uh, totally ecstatic when it happened. It wasn't like it was a horrible thing, but it certainly was a wrench, right? Thrown into <laughs> For sure. Laura, how do I have a well oiled machine that can run this company and still provide me with the income I need so I can be the mom I want to be and put my family first? That's when I learned how to build my team. And my when I did that, Bob, my revenue of that company doubled and then it doubled again. And I have had steady growth since then. So big things have happened when awful things or shocking things have happened in my world. And it's still, I look at that every time we have a problem or a challenge, it's an opportunity. Once we figure that out, first of all, we'll never have that problem again because we've solved it and it levels us up. The solve is the push we need to get to the next level. So I sort of welcome, I don't like it in the middle of it, but it certainly has helped us create systems and processes that have made moving forward smoother. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I got a, a lesson from one of my best friends about that. That's an engineer. He's got a real engineer brain. And when I started our, our marketing consultancy, uh, he said, you know, you got to really think about systems and processes. And I thought, what, what, what are you talking about? I'm, I'm, this is marketing. We're building websites and doing SEO stuff. And, and, but I never forgot it. And, and you're right. It's all about systems and processes, building a business that will run on its own and, and that you can sell without you having to stay on. And you've perfected that. Um, one thing I want to, um, segue into here is the, 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 the business you've built runs on its own. It just keeps growing and making more and more revenue without you, without your you know input being there on every little process and every little thing that's going on. That's freed up a lot of time for you to start your Renovate Her network, which I think is super cool. Um, you know, we've, you know, we've been talking about women in construction, women in the building and remodeling industry and how there's not enough. I just read an article the other day. It's, it's up to a whopping 10%, the highest it's ever been, which is certainly not enough. Tell us more about the, the inspiration for the Renovate Her Network. Well, the, uh, I wouldn't say that we're in, the inspiration for that really started probably 20 years ago when I went to start my business. I sought out other women business owners in my little small town. It was a much smaller town at that time. There, there were no women remodelers, period, at all. But there were other women uh, design consultants and interior designers. And what I discovered was that um, there was this mindset of scare. It was a scarcity mindset. In other words, if I share some knowledge with you or a source with you or even some encouragement with you and you find success, then I'm going to have to lose some of my success in order to give it to you. That's a scarcity mindset that if I do something good for you or if you're successful, I'm going to lose. And an abundance mindset is there's enough success to go around for everybody. We could all grow and benefit and we can support one another. And that didn't exist in my town at that time, not just with me, but I watched how they interacted with one another and it was not. They did not interact with one another. No one was supporting anyone. And so I thought, as time went on and I started figuring things out and coming up with some of these systems and processes and seeing success, I thought, I'm going to share this with other women. I don't want them to have to have the years it's taking me to figure this stuff out when I, I can just share it with them. And I want women to love business like I love business, whether it's renovation or something else. There's, there are ways to do this in such a way that it's not just a burden. And I see so many just close their businesses so quickly. And so I thought I will share this. And so the first thing I've done to share it is um, I really got into real estate investing. I started coaching other women on house flipping, right? Because we're going to renovate houses to flip them. We're going to renovate those houses if we want to turn them into an Airbnb. But they didn't, they want to be an investor, but they didn't know anything about the renovation. So I started coaching that, fell in love with it, decided to 
um, move away from the company I was doing that with in order to coach women in business in general. And then wrote, and then realized again, it's not business in general that I'm passionate about. I really want to niche down to back to renovation. That's my love. So Renovator was born. I have a 12 month program. We just launched February this year. We haven't even met our first 12 months yet. I have women that are passionate about design and remodel and want to also own a business that they can get to seven figures quickly. They want to make big incomes. They're not just trying to supplement grocery money. So these students of mine spend about six months getting educated in bathroom remodels, like the details of it and of kitchen renovation and how to do flooring takeoffs and how to, you know, do bids. And it's a step by step from qualifying a client to the first step you do in their home, to how do we do a scope of work? How do we bid it? How do we propose it? And then once I get them educated in that first six months, they're going to continue with that education. But now we add in, let's go get you some clients. And so once they do that, I mentor them through the estimating process, the project management. I had a student so excited at her class last night, she got a sign off on a $50,000 kitchen. And so, you know, I will be walking through the project management on that job now with her while she's still in her 12-month program. And so that's really what the program consists of at this point. We're still really new, so things may shift and change and add. Um, and then eventually we'll be adding in uh, real estate investing, house flipping as well to that, uh, understanding the renovation, which is a little bit different uh, for investing. But that won't happen for a while. Um, because I'm in a non-compete with another company. So when that's done, you know, I'll be good to go on that. But that's sort of where we're headed with it. Okay. I, I love hearing that. The, the thing that really jumped out to me is that abundance mindset. Uh, we, I experienced that in, in my industry, in marketing industry. Um, I, I network with a lot of other people, kind of like you're networking with your students. And we just say, hey, there's so much abundance out there. There's so many people that we can help companies that we can partner with and, and help move them forward, help move their company forward with systems and processes, or just maybe w with revenue. Um, and, and we never really think about, oh my, I can't, oh, that, I don't want to lose that project. I can do that project myself. You can only do so much yourself. So why not just have that abundancy versus scarcity mindset? So uh, it's something I talk about a lot and I'm, I love hearing it from you. Um, it just reinforces and Hopefully more people think in that in that term that there's so much abundance in the world. Uh, there's enough for all of us out there. Yeah. And, and so with your Renovate Her Network, um, is that just local to the um, Central Texas area or is that nationwide? It is nationwide. We uh, meet on Zoom for our classes. So our classes are twice a week on Zoom. So I have women all over the country. And we, uh, we're having our first retreat where they are all coming here to Georgetown, Texas. And we will be spending several days um, with uh, classes here locally in my showroom and in uh, showrooms all over Austin. We'll be going in for product knowledge and um, doing some field trips. Oh, that's awesome. That's great. Um, I'm a guy. Can I be a part of this? <laughs> <laughs> You actually cannot, unless you're going to be teaching or sharing something, you can't be a student. No, I really just want to focus on women. And the reason why is because I, I, men will go out and start working for a, a ring model, right? They'll learn on the job and women want to have a part of that business too. They don't necessarily want to have a tool belt on and go out and learn how to do that. So I'm able to teach them how to be the business owner, the general contractor and the designer, the design consultant on it. And, um, learn at the feet of not only of me i mean i'm going to mentor them and teach them everything i know but i learned at the feet of the specialty contractors and i tre i treasure and ch i just love my team and i don't even call them subs and subcontractors anymore i call them specialty contractors because these are the best uh guys and women that know these trades these crafts and these these craftsmen are dying out and we need to learn from them. And that's who helped me. They would correct me. They would tell me how I could do things better. Um, and I, you know, I made some big mistakes early on. So I, um, I just think that women need to have a safe place to come and learn how to run this kind of a business. And again, 
I want them to get to seven figures within 24 months. And um, that's a, that's always our goal. And that may not be their goal, but that's my goal if they want it to try to achieve that. And so the the women that are in your your coaching program, do they have to have any previous design certifications or experience or remodeling experience or the, can they come in just completely green, wet behind the ears and, and you're going to teach them from the ground up? So I, there absolutely is no prere- prerequisite to come into my program. Uh, some of the ladies have come in, they have been uh, design consultants. Uh, they, that's what they do. I have one who does staging. She enjoys staging um, for real estate agents and for uh, homeowners alike. But most of them come in completely green. I do have some real estate investors who want to take their their uh, teams they're using in uh, flipping houses and turn it into how do I go how do I do this for a client a client that's going to pay me how do I how do I charge for this what's the right um, how do I propose this how do I protect myself and then how do I do this inside someone's home that they live there like it's a totally different business um, now I, but I will say this. In Texas, and I think there's about 17 states that do not have a requirement for a general contractor license. Now, in those states, obviously, we must use licensed technicians like plumbers, HVAC, and electricians pretty much across the country. That's required, but not all of them require licenses for GCs. So there are the states that require, and they're all different, what they require to act as a general contractor for a client. So we figure out what those state laws are for each state. And then we figure out how do they create their business around that. And then I've even had one student who just said, to heck with that, I'm just going to get my general contractor license. She took the course, went and sat for the test and she passed it. And now she can be a GC in in, uh, North Carolina where the law was anything over 40,000, you have to have that license. So she said, well, I'm not just going to do the little stuff. And she did it. So I've had one person do that. Everyone else, we've created their business around their state's requirements. Okay. Okay. Um, and so, you know, in terms of your your coaching program, where do you where do you see that going? What's what's your vision for that? Where do you want to take that? I know you said you're going to be adding flipping uh, into that once that non competes up for you. But um, do you have a vision for for where you're going to take that? I mean, you got these retreats now set up, field trips. Like, what's next? Well, definitely want to continue doing that. I think it's important for the students also to be able to get together in person and be with like-minded women with the same types of goals and get educated. Um, so that will continue. The uh, I also run a Facebook group, a private group called House Flipping Women. We are over 10,000 strong. And so eventually I do want to be having some really large retreats for women who are interested in renovation, whether it is for investment purposes or for client business purposes. Um, and I would love to see some, you know, great speakers coming in, sponsorships from wonderful companies that would come in and support us and really start promoting women in the renovation industry or in subcategories of this renovation industry because there is so much money. It's over a $4 billion industry. And like you said, we are just getting up to 10% of women-owned businesses in this. We have so much room to grow in this and add women. One of the largest roofing companies in uh, Texas is called Kangaroo, and it is owned by a woman. And, you know, there's just a lot of room for us to have that same kind of success. And I want to share that with all of these women. That's great. That's awesome. I love that mindset. Um, just kind of as we wind down here and wrap up, where, where do you see any any technological changes or innovations or, or, or just kind of course corrections, course corrections for the whole remodeling you know, industry in general? So I'm just going to tell you, Bob, I am a low tech gal and we have um, and it may be my age. Right. I, I, I own up to that. And um so, you know, when I hire people 20, 30 years younger than me, you know, they're more likely to want to do certain things, but we like to keep it simple. And we have, we have looked at all kinds of different softwares that are out there on the market. And every time we, as a group, as a team, we decided that either the learning curve was too big for the whole team to get off the work, or it was just more than we needed. 
And so we have developed our own in-house systems um, that are super low tech and super um, effective, right? Because if it's simple, everyone on the team can use it. And if they don't find it simple, they will just, they just won't do it. And so what we've come up with is all in-house uh, systems. Now, obviously, drawing programs, project management programs, there, there's just so many things out there. And I don't even get into those things in my Renovate Her uh, education. It's just not possible even in a 12-month program to also teach a drawing program. But um, we, all I can say is for me and my staff at this point, we keep it simple. So we use things like Cheap Architect. We use Teemo for project management. It's just super, super simple things. And then Google Suite for business. We have everybody on that for a project. We didn't have to go out and get any special software. Every chat, every communication, every photo, every drawing is all inside of that. So everyone on the team can open it at any time. And we've seen really expensive software that basically did that. And we just passed on it. So I'm not the person really to be on here talking about tech. There's probably amazing guests that can share <laughs> what they are using. And um, we just keep it simple. Yeah. Keep it simple, right? Uh, the KISS principle. <laughs> yeah. We'll leave the other S off so we don't offend anyone. <laughs> um, parting, parting shot here for you, Gigi. Any advice that you could give for anyone that wants to enter the remodeling industry or, or maybe for specifically a woman that's kind of, you know, a little reticent? What would you tell them um, and, and to get them inspired to just take that leap into the remodeling industry? First of all, that is um, that requires passion. You have to start any business. You have to be passionate about that business because it's it's a big step to do that. So I would say you have to be passionate about either the design business, the remodel business, the house building business, whatever that may be. And then don't feel like you have to start your business where someone People will look at where you're at and tw you've been tw 20 years to get to this point. And they're like, okay, to start that business sounds so overwhelming because you can start with one thing, one or two things. You can start your business with a very small and a very small niche and become known for that, get good at it, become confident in that because you, you see success and then you start adding to it. So I suggest to people a lot, if they want to start renovation because i think that's where the money's at let's start you off with kitchen remodels let's get you so comfortable with kitchen remodels and with the uh with your sources and with the products and with the the, the contractors and then when you feel like oh i've got this down i've got some success then we add bathrooms to that bathrooms are a little harder right there's a lot more layers in bathrooms we don't have to start with everything but we do have to start. So we choose one thing. And the other is doing it alone is possible because I'm proof of that. But the years to get to the success when you do it alone is simply silly in this day and age when we have coaches, educators, mentors, internships. There's so many ways to go and learn this and be supported. Um, and I'm just going to tell you that uh, when you put some money into it, I just I just hired a new mentor for my business, uh, the most expensive mentorship I've ever joined. But if I don't put some money into it, I might not show up at all the meetings. I might not read all the material. I might not do all the homework, right? So having some skin in the game, don't let that deter you from hiring a good mentor or a coach. Because once you have skin in the game, you're going to show up. And it makes it much more... Uh, serious in your mind to do that. Buy a seat at the table. Join networks of other really successful people in the same industry. Learn from them and be. Let them be to your left and your right. That's who you're gonna. That's who you're going to scale up to be like, right? Um, so that's my big advice: is do not try to do this on your own by just looking at YouTube and reading books. Get yourself with the right people. Great advice. Great advice. I did, like you said before, shaving 20 years off of your learning curve is, 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 is it's a huge step. So, no, that's great advice. Um, 
as you said earlier, Kinsey Interiors and Remodels located in Georgetown, Texas, there north of, of Austin. Uh, for people that want to get in touch with you or someone that may be interested in, in your Renovate Her Network uh, Facebook group or, or coaching program that you have, uh, how would they get in touch with you? Well, the easiest way for Kinsey Interiors is to go to KinseyInteriors.com. And you can, you know, you y'all, your team created my website. There is a button you can push that will phone our office. Uh, but that is the easiest, quickest way. The Renovate Her program business network is at renovateherbizbiz.com. They can go there again, a click of a button will actually set them up where they can choose a time to just chat with me because I love to talk personally to every single woman who is interested in our program. And then on Facebook, uh, you can join my House Flipping Women. And this is a private group. So you can come on there and ask all the questions you want about renovation, design, or house flipping. And none of your friends and family will even see your questions about it because it, it will be inside this group with amazing women who are very knowledgeable. All right, great. Well, thanks for that contact info. We'll make sure we put that uh in our description as well when we publish this episode. But uh, Gigi, I would just want to thank you again for coming on. You have been an amazing guest. The, your your the amount of info you have, your your out to, your your attitude, your outlook on life, your your approach to to everything, the way you just tackle uh, everything that, you, that is put in front of you, the success you've had. It's it's truly an inspiration for me, and I hope it serves as an inspiration for many others as well. Thank you so much. I enjoyed it. It was fun. And I cannot just wait to see the success of this podcast for you. Awesome. Thank you so much. Really appreciate you. Uh, for everyone else, thank you again for tuning in to the Home Remodeler Toolbox podcast. And we'll look forward to seeing you again on the next episode. Hey, if you liked our podcast, join the remodeling community and hit subscribe. We would love to hear from you. So be sure to share your thoughts on what you might want to hear about in future episodes. If you're ready to take your business to the next level, visit HomeRemodelerSEO.com and check out our services that can help build your foundation for success. Thanks for tuning in to the Home Remodeler Toolbox Podcast, and we'll see you on the next episode.